Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's episode, I'm going to cover my breakdown and repair of Vector. Uh, what you see in front of you is all the pieces that I used during the competition. Um, there was one more wheel, but I lost it uh, somewhere in the Russian move and all that stuff. But uh, before I get too far into this, I want to show you a couple things that I got during the competition. And the first one is the top cover from Phantom 2. Uh, during our fight, I uh, managed to crack it pretty significantly, and they were kind enough to give it to me as a war trophy. The other parts that I got are a couple of D2 wheels from Chunky Monkey. Um, I think this is the one that I managed to rip off, and then the other one's got some pretty good chunks, no pun intended, taken out of them. One of my favorite parts about combat robotics is that competitors will often gift uh, broken parts to the uh, people who broke them. And uh, I've got a little collection, and it's uh, always nice to add to it. Uh, moving on to uh, the disassembly of the robot, um, inspecting the wheel hubs here. Um, these modules worked out really well. Um, there are a couple of changes I want to make to them. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of a break in this one. And as you can see there, the uh, motor gearboxes started to come loose. Um, that's because I didn't Loctite them, because I totally forgot. So, um, this panel had a little bit of a warp in it, and I was in a rush, and so I ended up replacing it. Um, and this part here, it's got a couple of big gashes in it from the uh, fight that I had with Phantom 2, and so I ended up replacing it as well. And this wheel is also from the Phantom 2 fight. Uh, he uh, pretty much demolished it. So... Moving on to the disassembly of the robot, I um, have already taken some screws out of this, um, but I haven't opened it up yet. And the reason I took the screws out is because I do not transport my robots with batteries in them. Um, I've always been kind of weary about that. I transport my lipos in lipo bags because I think that's much safer. Um, so there's the uh, aluminum spacer that the needle bearing runs on. It came out with uh, no Mars on it. The uh, AR500 uh, bar came out pretty good. Uh, as you can see, the uh, the motor there is a little bit loose, and that's because the screws are uh, already out of it. Um, that screw right there that I just pointed to is uh, the head's machined off. But taking it off isn't going to be a problem, because as you can see, that part actually delaminated. And this is one of the major changes that well, I guess it's kind of a minor change. Um, instead of using embedded fasteners for the production kit of the Vector, I'm going to do uh, hexagonal standoffs that run all the way through the part. So this type of damage shouldn't happen on uh, future robots. Uh, the panel otherwise, uh, despite running the whole competition, is uh, not really warped. It's in pretty good shape. It's got a couple of nicks missing out of it, but I'm very happy with the way that held up. Um, so now I'm just going to take the couple of remaining screws out of this one, and uh, this panel's pretty darn mangled. During the rumble, I took some damage right away, and uh, unfortunately it caused me to stop spinning. Um, I took a direct hit from one of the egg beaters on my uh, weapon belt. And it didn't break the belt, but it broke it most of the way through, and it folded underneath the uh, brushless motor hub and uh, jammed. And so with the belt off the track and halfway broken, it uh, jammed up my whole weapon assembly, and I didn't spin. Which made me vulnerable to the spinners because the uh, thinner sections are usually protected by the... Uh, spinning bar of death in the front of the robot so um, I also kind of deliberately fed myself into it a couple of times um, to try and get them to go flying so uh, yeah I took some pretty good damage there um, but it's repairable I think so the uh, yeah right there you can see this part here delaminated I'm gonna beef that up in the uh, next version and uh, all it is is it's a ring that presses directly onto the motor. Uh, this is the same way that I uh, did Death Wobble and it, it holds up really really well. Um, when uh, 
you have a big hit, it will slip a little bit, but otherwise it's not too bad. As you can see, you can just press it right on there. Um, a little bit tighter fit doesn't hurt, but uh, it ran the whole competition just fine. Um, I monitored it and it didn't slip at all. So um, now I'm going to move on to uh, repairing the uh, panels. So I'm just knocking the uh, burrs off of those because they're all pretty flat. And I started with the uh, the mangled panel because I figured that would be the worst one to repair and it was certainly the most uh, bent up. And I just, I'm just grabbing it with the vise and when I'm hammering on it, I'm not necessarily trying to hammer it flat. Um, there's spots that have little raised up edges that are burrs and I'm trying to uh, just flatten those with the rest of the uh, frame. But I'm also, I should note that I'm putting pretty much my whole body weight onto this thing and it's only 80 thousandths thick. So you see a lot of deflection and uh, the robot doesn't actually deflect that much um, on hits. The, uh, when all the pieces are bolted together, the um, frame holds everything rigid between the very large standoff in the front and then the uh, 3D printed parts in the back. So I don't have to get it perfectly straight. I just have to get it, you know, kind of sort of straight. And as you can see, I, I give up on this panel um, here in a minute. And uh, it's it's more or less straight, but it, it does have a little bit of a, you know, warp to it. So I move on to the next one. And this one's got a little bit of warp in the front, but not too bad. So a little bit of uh, elbow grease, and that one's uh, pretty much good to go. And this one had a burr on the edge and that was about it so the one bottom corner was bent a little so I straightened that out and now I'm just gonna bolt the uh, the hub and the uh, 3d printed parts back on um, I am going to be doing some upgrades so um, this is just temporary because I'm gonna do uh, standoffs instead of embedded fasteners so I'm going to be showing some upgrades that I'm doing to Vector in my next video, um, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you enjoy this type of content, uh, please take a moment to uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Um, so I bolt everything back together here, and uh, just testing to see that make sure everything pulls straight. Um, tighten everything down. As you can see, you know it's not too bad. It, it's there's a little bit of bend in it. You know, you can see right there there's a little bit of bend, but there's lots of clearance and oh wait. Why does that not spin? Oh. I figured out here in a second. I uh didn't put the spacers in. And uh if you watch from you may not be able to see it, but I actually forgot to put the spacer on the other side too. So there should be one spacer on each side, and that gives the uh the weapon assembly just a little bit more room because uh, it's a one inch bearing on a one inch spacer and so it needs a little bit of clearance to spin um, so once I put this in here and uh, straighten it out it should spin pretty good so now that I got this back together everything spins freely and uh, everything's rigid and good to go um, I'm gonna redo the 3d prints and uh, make some modifications, which I'll cover in my next video, and uh, I'll be ready for competition again. Thanks for watching.